Hello, in this video we're going to model um, a love affair and we're going to do that with some very simple differential equations and then we'll simulate that love affair using Euler's forward method. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got. Um, first of all, I've made a function. So recall that in MATLAB, functions have input arguments and output arguments. So this function is going to be named out of touch and I'll explain why I named it that in a minute. Um, but that's the name of the function and then it's got two input arguments x naught and y naught and those are the initial conditions for two people's feelings towards each other. And then the output is x, y, and t and those are arrays. We'll see what those are as we explore the code. Okay, so here's our setup. This function takes an initial condition x naught, y naught and returns vectors x, y, and t based on the model of a love affair between person x and person y. We denote x lowercase x as the feeling that person capital X has towards person capital Y. So if x is positive then that's love, if it's negative then that's hate, and if x equals zero then this is indifference. And we'll do the same thing for y, so little y will denote capital Y's feelings towards capital X. Um, and you could certainly, you know, make this more complicated and, and modify the model and people have had all sorts of fun uh, coming up with many variations of this model. But we're going to keep it simple right here and just see what this model gives us. So the differential equation model is right here. We've got dx dt equals a times y and dy dt equals b times x. What does this mean? What this means is that person x's feelings are going to change over time, right? This is the derivative. So person X's feelings change over time and here's how they're going to change. They only change based on what Y is feeling. So this person, uh, person X is really out of touch with what they feel, right? This function's not even dependent on X. So it doesn't even matter what X is feeling. Uh, the future state of X's feeling is totally dependent on what the other person's thinking and feeling. Okay, and so that's going to be some coefficient a times y. So, for example, if a were to be 1, then if y is feeling positive about the relationship, then, then x is going to be fired up and fall more deeply in love, right? And then if that was negative, um, if, if y is feeling positive about the relationship, that's going to scare x away and x is going to get into hate mode pretty quickly. All right, so we can play around with what a and b would be. For now, I'm just going to leave them to be general things. And then similarly, y's feelings is totally dependent on what x is feeling and it's a similar sort of deal that, you know, depending whether b is positive or negative, that's going to drive uh, the reaction. Okay, this is modified by uh, Steven Strogatz, a mathematician at Cornell, and um, I made the modification. So we're going to model this with Euler's forward method. We'll need a little time step. I'll do 0 0.01. And to begin with, I'm going to let a be negative 1 and b be 1. And you could change those up and explore this. We'll run it for 50 time steps. So t is an array, 1 up to 50 time steps, and we'll move in chunks of dt. Our initial conditions for x and y's feelings, those are x naught and y naught, and we feed those right in up here at the top of the function. So when we call the function, we'll feed in those initial conditions. Here's our for loop, so it starts and the for loop ends, and what we're going to do is the new feeling of x is the old feeling of x plus our rate of change times dt. And remember the rate of change is a times y and then our other differential equation is y um, new y equals old y plus b times x sub i. Okay, so let's run the code. Um, notice that there's an extra end here and that end is corresponding to the function ending and that does not get a semicolon at the end of it. Okay, so let's copy paste what we've got and I'm going to feed in uh, initial condition for x of 1, initial condition for y equals 2. Let's hit enter. Now I didn't suppress the output so I had a lot of stuff on the screen. I can clear my screen up. Um, but notice that my output arguments are x, y, and t over here. So I could do a phase portrait by plotting 
oops, plotting x and y. Okay, so it looks like these lovers are kind of going around in a circle. So let's trace this out. We started right here at 1, 2. x was 1 and y was 2. And what happened is x's feeling started to decrease, right? We're moving to the left for x. So x is falling out of love. Eventually x is in the negative zone. x is hating. Um, and then as x hates more and more, that's going to drive down y. So now y and x are hating each other. And they hate each other so much that eventually x starts to fall back in love and that drives y back in love. And around they go. They are in this endless cycle, uh, never probably finding a happiness, a stable equilibrium, a loving relationship. They are just going to go around and around forever. Now it does look like that spiral is getting a little bit bigger. Let's see what happens if we did a phase portrait. Okay, So let's do a phase portrait. I'm going to make this into a different figure. So I'm going to make it figure two. So there's figure two. It's blank. But let's put something in it. Let's put a phase portrait for x. Um, so let's plot time on the horizontal, x on the vertical, and I'm going to make this a red line. And I'm going to make it uh, I'm going to make it a dashed red line. Okay, so there it is. And now let's hold on to that figure. Let's also plot y's feeling, see what's happening to y, and I'm going to make that a solid line that's going to be blue, and I'm going to add a legend here. Uh, first we plotted x and then we plotted y. Okay. We could add an x label and a y label on here, so we could say the x label is a time, and we could say the y label is a feelings or something like that because that's what we're modeling. We're modeling the feelings for x and y. Okay, so it does look like those oscillations are getting bigger over time. Um, that certainly could be a numerical error from our discretization or it could be um, in fact that this is an unstable situation and they're just going to keep loving and hating um, more extravagantly over time. Okay, I'm going to close that figure. We still have a figure one open. All right. So let's see. I think I have hold on there, but let's just make sure. And now what I want to do, I'm going to plot a different initial condition. So let's just pick, you know, um, some other initial condition. Let's pick something negative. So instead of one, two, let's pick negative one, uh, negative point one, something like that. Let's see what happens. And now we can add that to our plot. Okay, so that also cycling around, um, that's a smaller, looks like smaller set of circles, um, but it will spiral out eventually. And it's uh, smaller because we chose an initial condition that was closer to the origin. Right? So you could certainly add many, many different uh, initial conditions to the same phase portrait. And of course you could add your X labels on here and your Y labels if you were doing this for a homework assignment, for example, and you wanted to turn that in.